So my son and I just got back from DC's latest movie, Shazam, and I wanted to sit down and make this video because there's something really important that everybody missed. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and sometimes what I like to do is pull different topics from movies, TV shows, pop culture, and all that kind of stuff to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, we will be talking about Shazam today and there will be some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you might want to turn this video off, come back later. But if you don't plan on seeing the movie, there's some very valuable lessons in this video that we're going to be discussing. All right. So in Shazam, you got Shazam. All right. So Shazam is a superhero uh, who is a kid named Billy who ends up getting this, these powers. But originally, um, Dr. Savannah, he was the one chosen or one of the people chosen to possibly get the powers of Shazam. So the movie starts off with where we see um, Dr. Savannah as a child and his name's Thad. And you could tell that, you know, his father and his brother, they think he's weak. They think he's not going to amount to anything and all of that. And when Thad misses out on the opportunity to become Shazam, that becomes his driving force in life. That becomes his ultimate desire. He wants to gain this power. And then we see once he gets the power of the seven sins, he goes back, gets a little revenge on his dad and his brother and all that, right? But then he still wants more. He wants the power of Shazam. So Billy, on the other hand, he has a different driving force and that's to find his mother. So when Billy was a kid, he got separated from his mom and now he's just been bouncing from foster home to foster home and he's constantly on this search for his mother. So his ultimate desire is trying to find his mom, connect with her and have his actual family. Now, something that we need to take a look at and it's really important to take, like dive into these movies and, and see, like I think superhero movies, like comic book movies, they're really important because especially when, when you take a look at this, right? When you take a look at two different people and one goes on a good path, one goes on a bad path and you see that a lot of them struggle with similar things, but one of them just went down the wrong path. But what I wanna focus on in this video is desire, okay? So what we find, especially when uh, Billy finds his actual mother and he goes and finds her and she, uh, he finds out that she actually left him. She left him with the police because she figured that um, the, the police would find him a better home and do something, you know, he would be raised by a family that could do much better than her. And Billy was absolutely heartbroken by that, right? But when it comes to ourselves, like I'm, I'm really into like philosophy and meditation and all sorts of things. And in both Buddhist philosophy, as well as in stoicism, they, they both talk a lot about desire being one of the root causes of suffering. All right. So in Buddhist philosophy, they talk about the hungry ghost and a lot of us part of, you know, the human condition is being this hungry ghost where we're constantly trying to fill ourselves up. But if you imagine a ghost eating, it just, it just goes out. Right. And this is something that we're always trying to do. We, we have this desire, whether it's, you know, money or a job or a house or a car or a relationship. But the problem is, is that we always want more. Like you can look at it in the, you know, in the realm of YouTube, right? Always wanting more views, more subscribers, more likes, all these things. And it's like, when is enough? And what we find is, is that sometimes that path of desire can ultimately lead us to more suffering. And this is something that I, I find happens to a lot of people. So when you look at Billy, for example, his ultimate desire was to reconnect with his mom. Not saying that that's a bad thing, but you know, sometimes once we reach that thing that we were looking for, we find that it's not what we expected, right? Like for example, a lot of people work their butts off and they're trying to get higher and higher and higher up in their company and they're constantly wanting more. You know, I've been guilty of this in the past too. I always want, you know, uh, a better position, better money, um, all these other things. But with everything that comes along, there's always a chance of new stresses. Like even if right now I handed you a million dollars, right? And you went out and got, you know, houses, cars, vacations, all these other things. With everything that you purchase, there's going to be new stresses. And the problem is when we're constantly trying to find these external things to fill us up, oftentimes we find that we're still empty in the end, all right? But 
what's the solution? What's the solution to this? So in both Buddhist philosophy as well as in uh, Stoicism, like there's a few things that we can do to help manage this desire. And in, in the aspect of Shazam, one of them is acceptance, all right? So when we look at Billy's character and he's constantly trying to leave all of these foster homes and like you got to imagine like when he's working with the, um, the social worker and talking to her and like he's not exactly a hot commodity when it comes to people who want to bring him in as a foster child and, and that's the thing. Billy is so focused on finding his mother that he doesn't even give any of these families a chance but at the end of the movie what we see is he finally gets into acceptance, right? And for some of us, we need to we need to get that ultimate desire just to realize that we were fine just the way things were all along. So at the end, when we see Billy sit back down at the table with uh, the other foster kids and his two foster parents, like he's finally in this acceptance where he's like, "This is my family," and that was kind of an overarching theme, uh, our overarching theme throughout the entire movie was accepting this is his family this is his home this is just what he needs to work on this is what he should be putting his efforts in i could really relate to that character of billy so while i wasn't a foster child you know i i grew up and i had an alcoholic mom but i i lived with my dad my dad was constantly working and one of the issues is when we when we fall prey to desire and we're constantly seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking like what we're doing is we're fighting against the currents of life, right? We're not in acceptance. So like when I was growing up, I wanted my life to be any way than it was right then, right? I wanted my mom to be there. I wanted my mom to be sober. I wanted my dad to work less. I wanted them in my life. You know what I mean? But very luckily, like I had really good friends who became somewhat like a, uh, a family. But, you know, although I was a kid, part of it was, you know, I was never taught to just accept things the way that they, they are. So I was still in misery. I didn't know how to appreciate and and be even more grateful for what was being handed to me. Because I remember even going over to my friends' houses and things like that for holidays and uh, my friends' family always being there for me. You know, I was constantly thinking about what I didn't have rather than accepting what was right there in front of me and being grateful for it. And speaking of gratitude, gratitude is the other way that we kind of overcome um, this this desire that's kind of messing up our minds. That's something that I found. Because a lot of us, if I'm just being real with you, like from my experience talking with a bunch of other people, even my own experience, a lot of us are very entitled and ungrateful, all right? We, we're, not, we're never grateful for what we do have, we always want more. And this is one of the issues with just living in kind of like a capitalist society, right? Because we're always trying to work to get the next thing, to get the next thing, right? Rather than being grateful for what we do have. Like I was, uh, I'm currently um, reading this book on stoicism and something um, that it was mentioning today in the book um, when I was reading it, it's actually a chapter on desire. Maybe that's why it's in the forefront of my mind is if you wanna be grateful for the things you have, Imagine having none of it, right? Like imagine not even having what you do have because sometimes our brain gets so focused on what we don't have, we forget about how valuable the things we do have actually are and what they mean to us. And it doesn't even have to be material things. Like it doesn't have to be this computer behind me. It doesn't have to be the camera I'm recording. It doesn't have to be the microphone I'm using. It doesn't have to be my phone. It could be, you know, my son who I just got to go and see this movie with. And then we get to go play Fortnite, you know, after I'm done recording and uploading this, right? I have my beautiful girlfriend. I have my family. I have my friends. Right? So sometimes the way I kind of snap back into gratitude is just to remember that I could have none of these things. Like, it, it's kind of messed up to say or to even think, but sometimes, you know, when, when we see others who don't have what we have, it gets us into that gratitude. When I was at one of my lowest points in life, one of the best suggestions I ever got was, Chris, when all you can do is sit in self-pity and think about the things that you don't have, call someone else on the phone and ask them how they're doing, right? And the more I did that, like my problems, they they didn't seem like anything at all. Like maybe just like something dumb happened that day. Like maybe a family member said something to tick me off. Then like I would just randomly call a friend and just say, hey, I just want to see how you're doing. And then 
something, you know, something awful is going on in their life. Maybe they just lost a job or their significant other lost a job. Maybe a family member was fallen ill or whatever that is. And it helps me get back into gratitude. But not only does it help me be grateful, but it also allows me to be there for other people. And this is one of the best ways to feel good and to feel better about yourself, right? For all the time we spend, spend thinking about what we don't have, when we're able to be of service to other people, we find this usefulness that that we don't usually have, right? Because we're constantly stuck in this cycle of gimme, 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 gimme. So even just by picking up the phone or even like texting somebody and saying, hey, how are you doing? It allows us to get out of self and start really, really, really being happy with where we're at in this moment, all right? But anyways, let me know down in the comments below if you fall prey to desire, if you're constantly somebody searching for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. If you saw Shazam, let me know your thoughts down below. My son thinks it's gonna be better than Avengers. We'll see on that one though, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to get access to exclusive Patreon perks and benefits, you can click or tap right there. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.